Join me today as we take a little journey to hunt down the filming locations for another horror classic, the 1987 film, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Part 3, Dream Warriors. Now this is actually my favorite of the Elm Street movies. I'm doing these a little bit out of order. I just did a video on the original 1984, but I had planned on doing Dream Warriors last year during Halloween. I ran out of time, so I was gonna do it this year but I also wanted to cover the original movie because of the 40th anniversary. So I skipped over part two for now, but don't worry because I will definitely be covering part two in the future. Now there are not as many locations for Dream Warriors as there are for the original movie. Most of Dream Warriors was filmed indoors or on sets, but there are some cool locations scattered around Los Angeles. And today we're gonna be hunting them down. So join me as we check out the filming locations for A Nightmare on Elm Street, Part 3, Dream Warriors. Let's go see what we can find. Okay, so technically the movie starts right here. That house behind me, that is obviously the Elm Street house from the original movie, originally Nancy's house. But in Nightmare on Elm Street 3, the movie begins with Kristen building this house out of popsicle sticks. She then falls asleep and has a nightmare and she wakes up with her bed right there in front of the house. You see the house behind her now looking very spooky and run down. Now the reason why I say technically the movie begins here is I don't actually think they ever filmed on Genesee Street for the third movie. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe they just rebuilt this house on a sound stage. So it does begin at this house, but I don't think they actually filmed on Genesee Street. All right, so we're on the UCLA campus and we're headed over to Royce Hall because quite a few scenes were filmed at Royce Hall and around Royce Hall. And it should be somewhere, uh, there it is. This is so cool. You're gonna recognize this right away. Check this out. So you probably already recognize this building here behind me. This is the backside of Royce Hall, and this stood in as Weston Hills Psychiatric Hospital. Meanwhile, inside the building, Hey look, it's Cowboy Curtis. How are y'all doing today? Kristen's mom brings her to the hospital and Kristen has a freak out until she hears the voice of the new intern. Oh my gosh, it's the return of Nancy. So right here is where we see Neil and Nancy walking. We see them passing by all of this. They pass by this lamppost. You can see this ball that's on top of the wall. They pass by this bench. We see all of this. and they come right over here. And there was a bench right here. There's not one anymore. There was a bench right over there that we just passed by, but they get to right here and they sit down on the bench and they're talking. And then when they stand up, Nancy drops her stuff and you see them bend down right here to pick up all of Nancy's stuff. And you can see all of this right here. You can see this pillar right here. So you know that this is the right spot. It's not where that bench is over there. So either they put a bench here just for the movie or there was a bench here that they removed. They then walk over this way. You see them walk around the wall and they're standing here for a moment talking. And then after Nancy walks away, Neil looks down this hallway and sees a mysterious nun standing at the end of the hall, staring at him. Ah! 
And in the final shot, when she disappears, you can see a door behind her, which I'm pretty sure is right on the other side of this bush. Let's go take a look. Yep, there it is. Actually, let's go around to the other side so we can actually see it. There's the door, there's that railing. I was a little worried that maybe we, we uh, weren't in the right place, but now I know we are. Right on the other side of this bush, that's the hall she's standing in. That's the door and the railing that you see behind her. Now this might be the most gruesome death in Dream Warriors. This is where Freddy turns Philip into a puppet. I mean, this always freaked me out when I was a kid. Freddy then of course makes Philip go to the top of the tower and jump off while Joey and the rest of the kids watch from their window. So this is on the front side of Royce Hall. There's actually two towers and it would be the one on the right side of the building. This is the tower that he's actually looking up at. Now this is pretty close to the shot that we get when they're watching him fall from the tower. Now they're supposedly looking out the window of their room, but right now I'm standing on just a big grassy area. There's no buildings here. So obviously they just put a fake wall right here with a window to have them looking at the tower. Right now we're at the Evergreen Cemetery in the Boyle Heights area of Los Angeles. Uh, this is the same cemetery that was used in A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1. And in Part 3, Dream Warriors, they actually come to this cemetery twice. The first time they come here is right after Philip and Jennifer pass away. There's big break in TV. And we see Neil leaning up against a tree, watching the funeral from a distance because he feels he feels like he should have been able to save them. And so he is standing there feeling really bad about himself. Now that tree is no longer here. However, the stump is still here. It's right over here behind me. I'm gonna take you over there right now and show you where the tree was. So right over here is where that tree was. You can see the stump is still sticking out. So I'm guessing they cut this tree down recently. There's wood chips like all over the ground here. Now, this looks like a pretty fresh cut, so I have a feeling that this tree was just cut down. My luck. Yeah, you could see pieces of the tree everywhere, but that's okay. We're still able to match things up. Luckily, the stump is still here, so that tells us where the tree was, and we're still able to match things up because of all of the graves and monuments that we see right here. So you can see this grave marker that has the ball on top of it. And then you can see this tall, skinny one. This large one over here. This one is just to the left of Neil. And then you also see just a little bit of this one. And then right over in that area, that's where the funeral was actually happening. And then of course, the mysterious nun in white comes up and approaches Neil and she's talking to him. And they're standing right here, you can see a lot of these tombstones here behind her, but what you can really see is all of those houses across the street from the cemetery, specifically this house. And then as Neil is standing here talking to the mysterious nun in white, Nancy comes over and calls out to Neil and she would have been standing right here. You can see this tombstone to the right of her and then this one behind her to the left and then these three can also be seen right behind her. So she was standing right in between this tombstone on the right and this one on the left. 
pretty much dead center right here is where Nancy was standing. And then that building just beyond that area, that's the same building that you see in the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie where Nancy is sitting on the steps. So they filmed everything in the same area for both movies. Even the funeral at the end was also in this area. I'll show you that in a little bit. I think for some reason when I was a kid, the thing that I really liked about this movie is when they all show off their dream powers. I don't know, I just thought it was really cool, even though it did them no good in the long run. Now while they were all under the influence of Hypnosil, Freddy got to Joey and put him in a coma. This, of course, caused Nancy and Neil to get fired. Now this is again the backside of Royce Hall. Right here is where we see Neil walking out after he gets fired. He's carrying his stuff over to his car, which would have been parked right here in this area. He then stops and he looks up at the tower. He would have been standing right here and he looks up in this direction, but that tower that he's looking at, that's actually on the front side of the building. So he then comes walking right over here. Right over there is where his car was parked, but he walks over here. This is supposedly the base of that tower. And you can see these are actually windows in real life. I have a feeling they were probably windows at that time too, and they just put fake doors over them. So he walks up to this door right over here and he breaks the handle off the door to go up to the top of the tower. And once he gets up there, he once again finds the mysterious nun who tells him the story of Frederick Kroger, son of a hundred maniacs. So this is a very quick scene, but when Neil and Nancy are driving down the street, just before they go to the bar to try and talk to Nancy's dad, they're driving right here on Larchmont Boulevard. And you can see that green roof on the left, but there's a couple of other things here that you can see that tell us that this is definitely the right spot. Okay, so in order to show you that this is the right spot, we actually have to refer to another movie. So there's a scene in Halloween 3 that was shot right here on this stretch of sidewalk. So in that scene, you can see this store right here. You can see these bricks. Everything right here actually still looks the same. You can see that green roof that I referred to a few seconds ago. It's just now completely covered by these trees. But more importantly, you can see this building right here. And back then, there was an awning sticking out that said Landis Department Store on it. Now, if we go back to Dream Warriors, I already pointed out that green roof, but if you look really hard in that scene, and I mean it is really hard to see, you can just barely see that same awning that says Landis Department Store. So this same block was used in both movies, just with the camera pointing in different directions. In Halloween 3, the camera is pointing in this direction, and then in Dream Warriors, the camera is looking in this direction. Now this right here behind me is St. Brendan's Church, and this is where Neil stops off to get some last minute supplies. All right, we're gonna see if we can get inside the church. This is actually my fourth time coming here, trying to get inside. I can actually already see that this door is locked. Yep. And, yep, that one too. So I'm not really sure what to do. Like I said, I've come here four times now trying to get inside. Um, obviously, I don't wanna come here during their service, um, but I've come before the service, I've come right after the service. I think service just ended like five or 10 minutes ago, but the doors are already locked. There's nobody around, the parking lot's empty. Uh, I always, I used to think that churches were always open. Like whenever you see in movies, uh, people just go to churches whenever they want, just like in this movie, he just goes in there, there's people praying, there's people lighting candles. So I thought that's how churches were. Um, but like I said, this is my fourth time and I can't seem to get in there, so. I was really hoping that I would figure out the location of the junkyard and there are a few different posts online with people claiming that they know the location of the junkyard, but none of them have any proof that it's the actual location. So for now, it remains a mystery. 
Man, I want that truck. And of course, for the finale of the movie, we return once again to the Evergreen Cemetery, this time for Nancy's funeral, which was taking place right here behind me, pretty much right where this patch of dirt is. This is where Nancy's funeral was held. Now this one was a little bit tricky to figure out and I'll explain why as we go. Now obviously as the camera zooms in, the placement of the tombstones is gonna change a little bit, but we'll start with this picture where you can see this tombstone right behind Kristen's head. And the only thing is it's missing the top. And if you look around this cemetery, a lot of the grave markers are broken in half or missing pieces. So not really too surprising that this one uh, could also be missing a piece of it. But if you look at this other picture where it's right in between Kristen and Joey, you can see that everything else on it matches up. It's just missing that very top piece. Now in this shot, you can see that grave marker. And then you can also see these three. These are the same three that you saw in the earlier shot when Nancy is approaching Neil. So you can see these three and then just behind the grave all the way to the right, you can see a tree. That's the same tree that Neil was leaning against earlier in the movie. And then behind the grave all the way to the left, you can see a tall grave. Now, the only thing that's missing is just to the left of the tree, you can see a building or some kind of structure. And that's the, uh, the building that the mysterious nun in white disappears behind. Now, that building was never actually here. That was probably just a fake wall that they placed there. Probably not even a fake building, just a single wall. And then when Neil walks over to it and finds that it's the grave of Amanda Kruger, that was actually right over here. And I'll show you how we can match this up and figure out that this is, uh, that this is the right one. But supposedly it's over there. You can see there's the, uh, the stump of the tree. So it would have been somewhere over here, but in reality, it's right here. This is where Amanda Kruger's tombstone was. And the way that you can tell that this is the right spot, I mean, besides the fact that, you know, everything here matches up, this, uh, this curb going around it and the designs on the wall, but you can also see these tombstones behind Neil. So definitely 100% without a doubt, this is where Amanda Kruger's tombstone was. And then based on all of those grave markers that we just saw, everything over here matches up and that would tell us that right over here is where Nancy's funeral was. Again, we're just missing that one building that I'm pretty sure was, uh, was just a fake wall. Well, that's gonna do it. That was a blast. I do wish I would have been able to find Neil's house that you see very briefly at the end of the movie, but there just wasn't any clues. But I still had a lot of fun checking out all those other locations. I hope you enjoyed it as well. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey, 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 what are you doing? What are you doing? Get out of my car, get back here. Welcome to Shreddy's Life. I'm your host now. <laughs>